Hello, good day to everyone. My name is Erika Castellanos, and I'm the director of programs at GATE, the Global Action for Trans Equality. Today, in the Fast Track Cities 2020, I will be presenting to you on Catalyst, COVID-19 has highlighted the need to em eliminate transgender discrimination in health law. Transgender discrimination in health law is not something new. What COVID has done is highlighted this and bring it in the spotlight. I will take you uh, through a series of topics and so that we understand the background and learn a little bit more about transgender people. So the session I outline, we will go to transgender people, a little explanation of who we are and um, some definitions. Then we'll talk about human rights and transgender people, discrimination and violence affecting us, transgender people and health. We will look at COVID-19 and transgender people. And finally, some recommendations and solutions. So let's take some time and examine what we mean by transgender. Who we are talking about when we say transgender people and try to understand what it is like to be transgender. Understanding what it might be to be transgender can be very difficult for people that have never met a transgender person that they know of or whose only perception and image of who and what transgender is comes from movies made in Hollywood. To start, we need to understand that transgender is a broad umbrella term that is used to describe people whose gender identity differs from the gender they were wrongly assigned at birth. We often use the shortened version trans for transgender. So this means that someone who identifies as female is called transgender woman, and someone who identifies as masculine is transgender man. It is really important that we use the correct pronouns when we address or refer to trans people. Gender identity refers to each person's individual knowledge of their gender. The knowledge of being a man or a woman or another gender. When we talk about gender expression, we refer to how a person expresses their gender outside. For example, through behavior, clothing, hairstyle, voice, or body image. When a, per when a transgender person starts to live according to their gender identity, it is called gender transitioning. Transition, transition is no easy task. Many trans people are discriminated. We experience violence, seen as outcasts, experience isolation. We are seen as outcasts and we experience isolation even from close family and friends. We go through harassment and even violence. But gender transition is very personal and there is no checklist to follow. In countries where it is allowed, trans people can choose to change their legal names and gender, but there are only a very few countries where this is possible. People may or may not undergo hormone replacement therapy or surgeries. It is very important to note that not all people fit in our binary gender system. Some people do not identify as male nor female. They are gender non-conforming, non-binary, or gender queer. When it comes to human rights, for transgender people, the reality is a very painful situation. A situation which many of us, which many states, donors and leaders choose to ignore. Here we have the 30 abbreviated human rights. And I can actually go through every single one of them and give you examples of how transgender people do not enjoy any single one of these human rights. And yet, there is little talk about it. We are killed every day 
and still the world remains silent. The world as a whole does not take action. And that inaction makes us all part of the problem. And yet we, the transgender community, still have hope. We still fight to survive day by day. And we also recognize the few handful of individuals around the world that are actually trying to make a difference. Let's take a look at a few of these human rights and discuss how transgender people are being denied those rights for all of us to get a broader picture of what kind of world trans people live in. So let's take a look at a few of the list of 30 human rights from the human rights chapter. Look, let's look at the rights to equality, freedom from discrimination, the right to life, right to free movement, the right to marriage and family, right to own property, and right to education. As trans persons throughout our lives, we do not enjoy any form of equality. We suffer discrimination by society, by the state, and even from our close friends and family. Trans people are being murdered and suffer violence on a daily basis at alarming rates. Trans people are negatively affected by poverty. And we have little to no access to education in many parts of the world. The lack of access to proper education places trans people at greater risk and vulnerabilities compared to the general population. Many transgender people are first to engage in survival sex work and also have little access to, the, to dignified employment. Small things that most of us take for granted are huge obstacles for transgender people. For example, opening a bank account, getting a driver's license, and having a legal identification that matches our gender. Trans people are frequently harassed by the state and suffer incarceration for being who we are. In many countries, it is illegal to be transgender, and we are first to live in the underground, which give rise to many more problems and issues for transgender people. It is very difficult to get married and form families because the state and society do not see trans people as equal citizens. Many issues arise because of the lack of legal gender recognition. Not having a legal document, like a passport or a driver's license, for example, limits our ability for transgender people to travel, even with their own countries. We don't have access to other things like housing for a mortgage, bank account, and education. And there are so many other issues that I can talk about. But this is just to give you a little overview of what we go through. When you talk about discrimination, violence, and exclusion, allow me to use the uh, report that was uh, published on the 20th of November 2019 for the International Day of Remembrance, which is published by the Trans Respect versus Transphobia Worldwide Team. This monitors research project uh, to update and join the voices raising awareness regarding hate crimes against trans and gender diverse people, and to honor the lives of those who might otherwise be forgotten. The report highlights that a total of 331 cases of reported killings of trans and gender diverse people happened between the 1st October 2018 to 30 September 2019. The majority of the murders occurred in Brazil, Mexico, and the United States, adding up to a total of 3,314 reported cases in 74 countries worldwide between the 1st of January 2008 and 30th of September 2019. And let's keep in mind that many of the crimes and the murders of trans people don't get reported or documented. 
Stigma and discrimination against trans and gender diverse people is real and profound around the world. And it's part of structural and ongoing circle of oppression that deprive us from our basic human rights. We are victims of hate, violence, including the extortion, physical and sexual assaults and murder. As I said, in many countries, data on murdered trans and gender diverse people are not systematically produced and it's practically impossible to estimate the actual number of cases. When we look at transgender people and health, we have seen that transgender people have historically had issues related to access to health services. This is a result of many factors, including lack of legal gender recognition, stigma and discrimination, and criminalizing of gender identities. The majority of transgender people can't afford or it is impossible to undergo legal gender recognition and do not have any documents that match their gender. One of the most important deterrents to accessing health is that trans people are misgendered in health facilities by healthcare providers. Healthcare workers constantly use the trans people's dead names and do not use proper pronouns. No one wants to be in a situation that you are called as someone who you are not. For example, when I was diagnosed with HIV in 1995, in my first times I used to go to the HIV clinic, they would use my dead name. And I would sit down, look around, like if I was finding the person, and wait a few minutes before I got up and go into the uh, room with the doctor. In addition, many states, donors, and organizations do not involve trans people when deciding and designing programs directed for us, transgender people. States can actually have all the good intentions, which in the case of transgender people, that is rarely the case. But let's remember that good intentions frequently do not go afar. That's because they do not reflect the needs of the community. We need to learn to listen to the populations we serve and understand what are the priorities of the communities. For example, hormone replacement therapy can frequently be the number one health need for transgender people and without which nothing else can be as having any value. I have the privilege to go to many countries and work with transgender people and in one occasion, I met a person who would not go to the clinic to get life-saving HIV medication. And that's because a person, that person had been told that ARVs interact with hormones and that you cannot take two at the same time. And she told me, I prefer to be alive a few days or even one day being who I am than be alive for many years, hating the image I see in the mirror. And that's very profound. And it's, you know, it's very hard for some people to understand, but it's important that we put ourselves in that situation. And, you know, talking about HIV, we need to recognize that HIV has taught us important lessons. We know transgender people are 13 times more likely to acquire HIV, according to the 2018 UNAIDS Miles to Go report. Nevertheless, we have collectively failed transgender people. We failed by not prioritizing their needs, by not engaging them in decision making, and by thinking that HIV prevention, treatment and care is all about biomedical interventions we continuously see that programs are imposed on transgender people. Programs that have been designed, developed and piloted in other populations. We are far from being able to say that SDG3 is or can be a reality for transgender people anytime soon in the near future. As long as trans people are labeled as mentally ill by not looking at trans people as human beings, this will not be possible. Now, COVID comes on top of everything that transgender people have been going through. And 
many people are talking about the issues transgender people are going through right now with COVID, but it's nothing new. COVID-19 has only exasperated the realities of transgender people all around the world. Pre-COVID, people were already suffering from stigma and discrimination, isolation, and violations of our human rights. States have taken a variety of measures to contain and respond to the COVID-19 epidemic, many of which unfortunately negatively affect transgender people. Countries have adopted policies that go contrary to WHO recommendations with no scientific evidence to back them up. For example, in some countries uh, that adopted lockdowns, mobility was restricted based on gender on your legal documents. This has been highly problematic for transgender people who in many cases do not have legal documents that match their gender identity. In many of those instances, trans people have been incarcerated and harassed by the police and other authorities because they are found outside of their homes when uh, according to their gender in the document, they should be at home. Many countries also designed programs to respond to the economic factors of COVID-19. But trans people did not have the equal opportunity to enjoy such social benefits. Hormone prescriptions in many countries were delayed or completely stopped, affecting gravely trans people. Trans people who were in line for surgical procedures, they have been canceled or they have been delayed. We have even seen examples of some countries that have taken COVID as an excuse to pass legislation directly affecting transgender people in a negative way. This is completely unacceptable. And one thing that we can take from COVID-19 is that it has further highlighted the precarious situation that transgender people around the world have to face and that we can no longer remain silent and can no longer step aside and do like this is not affecting us. So finally, a few things that we can take as we move forward. Trans people's dire situation did not start with COVID. Let's make that clear. But COVID has certainly made it worse. There are things we can do, each one of us, regardless of where we work, what profession we have a teacher, a student, a legislator, a politician, a doctor, all of us can do something. And the most important thing is to listen. We need to learn to listen to transgender people and stop trying to impose on us. Secondly, we can engage. Engage transgender people in discussions and decision making, but enable trans people to engage meaningfully provide support, the necessary tools, and even finance for trans people to be able to engage meaningfully. All countries in the world should try to achieve legal gender recognition for transgender people. There are many issues that having a document that reflects who we are can be a good start. Trans people are not criminals, and we should ensure that at last, and all countries that criminalize transgender people in the world be eradicated. We should ensure that the laws that criminalize us be removed. And finally, we need to depathologize transgender people. We are not sick, but we have been pushed aside. We have been isolated by the state, by our friends, by organizations, by families, and even by other communities. I want to thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you have any questions or would like to take in contact with us, I leave you my uh, contact details here. Thank you very much.